welcome to GoChurch.tv and thank you for joining us online today. We want to thank you for being a part of our online community and remind you that you are just as part of our family as everyone that is in-house today. You can engage just like anyone else here. Comment in the comment section. Share our feed with friends and family that might not be able to catch us live. That's what's so great about having this online opportunity. Um, we want you to put prayer requests in the comment section. If you have something, there's pastoral staff ready to engage with you. If you want to send it more privately, you can email us at info at gochurch.tv or you can send us a direct private message on our Facebook page. We also want to give you the opportunity to give. Um, it's not a debt we owe, but it's a seed we sow. And we have the amazing opportunity to have this online community, to go on mission trips, to support our communities here in Norman and around the world. Um, we want to give you the opportunity in a number of ways. You can go to gochurch.tv and give under the giving tab. You can text the number 84321, give any dollar amount, and it will prompt you to um, give you the instructions on how to do that. We thank you so much that you guys are joining us today and hope that you have a blessed week. Look at your neighbor and say, Go Church is a blessed church with overcomers, believers, and good people. Good people. Look at your neighbor and say, you're a good person. Joel Osteen would say, you are victors, not victims, all right? And that's what you are. Can I get an amen? Harrison dares me to give a Joel Osteen statement during every sermon. We are now fully on addicted to listening to Joel Osteen on XM Radio. I cannot believe it. It is awesome. Yeah, you know, when you get to thinking about who you are in Christ, you're not a dead man anymore. Look at you never say, you're not dead anymore. Become alive. You know what? You get, you get, I love this. This is what I, but I love. Um, we watch the movies with the, with the superheroes and the, and the superpowers. Let me tell you what's great. When you come to Christ, you automatically get a do-over. You automatically get a new life. You automatically get to power up. You automatically get to victor up. You automatically get to say, oh, yeah, that happened. I was running around, oh, waka, 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 being chased by ghosts from my past, but I had a power pellet and I am powerful and I am eating every one of those woo, ghosts in my past in Jesus' name. Okay, that was horrible. I said, you're eating those ghosts from your past in Jesus' name. Give God a shout of praise. We are overcomers. And when you come to Christ, the Bible says, look at your neighbor and say, the Bible says, old things, say old things, old things. Are you ready for this, Braden? Old things have a funeral. The Bible says old things are passed away. Man, that, uh, oh God, I tell you what, you guys need to eat your power pellets today. I said, the Bible says old things are passed away. Old things are pushing daisies. Well, I came into church today, and I'm full of debt. Well, you come and ask Jesus to help you, and he'll help you get free from that debt. You start speaking to that mountain to be removed. Next Sunday morning, you got a promotion, and you don't know how. you got a raise when the boss said, you know what? I don't know how we're going to make a pay. God can turn things around when you start speaking to that mountain, and the mountain is not debt. The mountain is doubt. When we speak to fear, when we speak to doubt, and we say, Psh, get out, you watch and see what God will do. Can I get an amen? Nice little amen. Nice little amen. I feel like we're at the Masters and we're all just patty caping for the Lord today, but it's okay. Old things are passed away. How many of you have something right now in your life that you wish were dead? I'm not talking about somebody and don't look around this room because we're all watching. How many of you have a situation? I was in Jamaica a few years ago and they say, we got no problems, Ma, no problems. Just situations. I'm like, I got situations, bro. I know all about that. What if I told you that according to the word of God, you can change your week starting now? 
You can change your month starting now. You can change your year starting now. You can change your life starting now. If you will begin to speak faith and you will begin to speak joy and you will begin to speak victory, you will watch your life turn from the past into a beautiful future that is completely unwritten. It's not written by the sins of my father, the sins of my grandfather. It's not written by the mistakes of my past or the mistakes of my family's past, but it is a beautiful future filled with the grace, filled with the love, filled with the joy, filled with the peace, filled with the protection, filled with the promise, filled with the prosperity, and it's laid out in front of me when I will let the things behind me stay behind me and listen to God as my future, as my provider, as my way out, because old things have dead and they had a funeral, and I'm not going to go back anymore, but I'm going to move forward in Jesus' name because I'm not digging it up anymore. We have the choice and we have the opportunity. Every one of us in this room to live a life of victory. Well, Pastor, you don't know. You don't know how bad things are at work. Oh, you don't know how bad things are at work. Let me tell you about that. Can I get an amen from the staff? You don't know how bad things are. Today is your day of turnaround. Today is your day of destiny. Today is your day of power. Today is your day of vision. Because the Bible says, this is the day that the Lord has made. And God never made junk, trash, confusion, depression, anxiety, or fear. God made this day. And he must have a reason I'm going through what I'm going through. God made this day. He must have a reason and a perfect plan. God made this day. And if God made it I'm his and he is mine we're going to get through it together from sunrise to sunset I will see God bless me and my house in Jesus name Jonah chapter 3 right next to Obadiah go to Jonah chapter 3 and we're going to begin to speak I have never taught Jonah in these four parts that we're preaching but it intrigued me Chapter 3 is intriguing to me. Chapter 1 is the call. Chapter 1 of your life is every one of you in this room have been called. You've been called. You're either living chapter 2 or chapter 3 right now in your life. Some of you are actually skipping ahead and you're naughty and you've gone on to chapter 4. And we're going to find out about that next week. Chapter 1 is the call. Everybody say the call. Hold on a minute. Hold on. I got to take this. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. All right. I got that. All right. Okay. Or it could be in 2019, it's the text. Oh, God. Oh, I don't know about Nineveh. Not going to do it. Going the other way. See ya. Dropping the phone. Boom. Changing my number. Boom. Doing it. Every now and again, I change my number because people call me or they'll text me and then they go crazy and I change my number. If you say, why don't I have Pastor Chad's number? You may have been one of those who went crazy. Everybody got the price paid. (laughs) Crazy town, I drop you, I get a new phone number. What's your phone number, Pastor Chad? If you don't have it, you're crazy. Anyway, (laughs) I'm not kidding. So I, I got a call. I got a call from God. You'll never guess what he said to me. I was 16 years old, and he said, you're going to preach the gospel. I don't want that call, Braden. I don't want that call. Click, disconnected. I want the call that God called me. I wanted to be outside of a pro sport athlete. You know, pro wrestler was definitely the dream for many years. I'm not joking, man. Some people, I want to be a doctor. I want to be, I want to be a pro wrestler. I want to take a chair shot. Don't do it to me, though. I want to be a, a, a professional drummer. I want to play for Striper, have hair. I'm glad I didn't join a hair band. I'd have been fired about 20 years ago. And I wanted to to be rich, rich. I didn't get that call. How many of you got the call that God said, I'm just going to make you rich? Did anybody here get that call? If you did, see me in the green room afterwards and we're best friends. You get my phone number. (laughs) I got a call. Hey, God, what's up? You're going to reach the world for me. Oh, that's what old people do. I'm 16. I'm young. I want to go on tour. You're going to tour. You're going to tour. 
You're going to tour Shakota. Shakota. <laughs> World tour. Shakota. Then, then, ah, ah, you're going to tour fourth grade boys in a class of 30 in Columbus, Ohio. Ah, I don't want to tour a class of 40. I don't, I'm four, fourth grade boys. No, 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 they're crazy. They're starting to stink. They don't realize that they, they're at that, about that age. They, they stink a little bit, need deodorant. They, no, 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 no. Yeah, you're going on tour. You're going on tour. And you're going to go back to Shakota. And you're going to start a bus ministry. No, I don't want to go on tour again back there. I don't want to go back there again. You see, we want to argue with the call, don't we? Whereas a Christian, we want to argue. You can't get to chapter number three where the revival's breaking out if you're still in chapter one arguing with God about the call, about the place, about the marriage, about the relationship, about where you're at. If you're ungrateful where you're at, you're never going to go where God's going to take you. Can I get an amen? The Bible says that he would reward us when we're faithful over the what? Poquito. Little things. Little. Little bitty things. God, I want to be in advertising. I want to be in advertising. I went to, I went to school. O- OSU Okmulgee. That's where you want to go to advertise. The big school in Okmulgee, Oklahoma. I said, God, and, and I joined the graphics design department. They accepted me. I got, and I thought, I thought, again, I'm not, I'm not the greatest guy. If you ask me what you want to do for a living, don't ask me. Don't ask me what you want to go to school for because I get confused. And they said, it's an art. And I'm like, art, man, I want to do that. I can come up with creative slogans. And I'm, I'm, I'm good at smart mouth, and so I can do this all day long. And I go, OSU at Mogi. And the first day, they say, we want you to deconstruct type. And I'm like, what is who to did that? I needed, listen to me real quickly. I needed four years of art. Has anybody seen me draw? I'm not talking about my lavish graphic designs, but I'm talking about my draw rings. It is awful. I needed four years of art. Do you know how many years of art I had, sis? Four minus four. That's how many years of art I had. That's zero. I go in there on the first day. I've got this awesome kit. I never forget. I brought it home. I went to the went to the bookstore and I had chalk. Didn't know you use chalk in art. I thought little kids use it to draw on the ground or a teacher on the board. Didn't know. I had charcoal. I thought I was supposed to cook something with this stuff. I had no idea what charcoal was all about. I had it on my hands. I put it on. Oh, I'm an artist. I just smudged. What do you see when you see that? My dad was like, dirt, what'd you do? I said, that's art. Okay. I had a had all watercolors. Oh, I had a big box. It looked like a tackle box. I had a big box. What am I doing? I got a big tackle box full of art. It was nice. Look, I'm going to class. I'm an artist. That wasn't my call. That wasn't my text. That was me walking around campus with a big old box that I didn't know what to do with because I was doing what God didn't call me to do, but I was doing what I thought I needed to do. Can I get an amen up in here? Does anybody know where we're going with this? I carried a box of stuff. You see, we come to church and we don't realize it because we think we tithe and we think we're giving a little bit and we think we're volunteering once a year on our cleanup trash day. We, we soothe our conscience. And what we're doing is we're not walking in the call, but we're walking around with a box. Every one of us know, you know what, you're, that box is crazy. And I don't know why you keep carrying it around and acting like you do because God has got something greater and a bigger call in you if you'll just let go of the box and begin to answer the call that God has called you to. Christians, we walk around with all of our our treats and all of our treasures waiting for God to open them up, waiting for God to teach us. And he says, that's not your call. That's not my will. That's not your purpose. That's what you want to do. And you wonder why you're miserable. And you wonder why you got chalk and dust and dirt on your hands. Can I get an amen? I was in, I changed my major four times in one semester. So that tells you what running from God's call looks like. So I go and I'm I go to the counselor, and I'm going to change to be a computer programmer. 
I went to Dakota High School. We had a typewriter. One was electric, and that's what I'm saying. I'm going to program computers. This was before Windows 95 came out. This was like, holy mo. People were using DOS still for everything. They said, we're going to have you write a line of code. It's one dot dot o o o o o one one zero 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 dot zero one zero one zero one zero one zero one. What does that mean? I'm like, oh, God, I have no clue. No, no, no. What is that telling you? It, you know what it tells me? Hold on a second. Yes, God, I didn't answer the call. Can I get an Amen. I decide I'm going to go into psychology. This is in the first semester of college. This isn't after four years. This is the first semester at Oak Mogi Tech. I'm running out of college. It, you know, it's such a small school. One guy may teach computer, and the other guy may be your art teacher and your algebra teacher. You know what I'm talking about? It was a small school. I go in there, and I say, I'm going to be a psychologist. That's it. I think people are crazy, and I think I can fix them. Because I was trying to get closer to the call, because that's kind of what we do. So I, I go in there, psycho and I'll never forget, I walk into sociology on the first day. First day in sociology. I'm in this major for one day. I'm a psychologist. That's what I'm going to do. I can fix people. I can talk to people. I've got a good personality. This is answering the call, God. Maybe not. I go into sociology on the first day. The teacher comes up and they say, we want to thank you guys for coming. Da, 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 da. This is your syllabus. This is what we're going to do this semester. And everybody, your final is an oral report. And I said, talking? Can we just hand it in? No, it's an oral report. You're going to give it in front of the class of 50, 60 kids. And I said, see you later. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I went back. To the admin building. I mean, I had a parking spot. They had Chad's spot. He's coming back. I finally got back to the admin office and I said, I, I can't do this. I can't do psychology. It's crazy. I can't do it. I said, I can't. I can't. I can't. I love it, but I can't. They said, why? I said, I don't talk in front of people. <laughs> Is that not the furthest thing from what I'm doing right now? There are steps to getting prayers made, and there are steps that you take to mess things up. Amen? So I said, I, I can't do it. I can't do an oral report. There's no way. I've never, as a matter of fact, when I was in high school, every day the oral reports were due, I skipped those days. I graduated Shakota High School without giving one oral report because I missed the day. Ah, I missed my time. And they said, well, just go ahead and hand in what you have. And I'm like, man, I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> yes. And so I, I said, I'm changing my major to gen ed. Gen ed. That's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be gen ed. I'm going to be a teacher someday. Now, that was never going to happen because I skipped school more than I went. So I said, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, do, I'm going to change and I'm just going to do general education because obviously I don't know what I'm doing and God's got this. Hey, Chad, come on now. Answer that phone. Uh, that phone's dead, Jesus. I can't take that phone. I was in class one day. Listen to me. God will use the most unlikely case scenario to get his message through to you even when you're running from the call. God, in, J in Jonah chapter number one, God used who? Fishermen. They said, whoa, we got a storm. and it's, it's wrecking our ship. What's going on? God used the captain. He used Gilligan. He used the professor and Marianne to say, hey, Jonah, you're running from God, and God has a call on your life. You know what, church? We need to be that catalyst for someone. And the only way you're going to be the catalyst or I'll be the catalyst for someone's will of God and to help them and to promote them and to push them is for us to get in line with God and answer to the call the first time he calls. Can I get an amen? And I had a professor, and he called me in his office one day. It was in one of the computer classes, a gen ed computer class, where I learned how to do word perfect. That's way, way back in the day. And he calls me in there. He doesn't know me from Adam. But he says to me, he says, why are you here? And I'm going to ask you this morning, and I'm watching everybody that's watching right now. Everybody, listen to me. Why are you here? I said, I got, I got a Pell Grant, an OTAG. Y'all know what those were? Old school. I got, a, I got a scholarship. I do not know how. But I'm, I'm, 
I, I'm, going to, I'm going to school because that's what you're supposed to do. And he said, why are you here? And he's serious with me. And I noticed behind him he had graduated from Oral Roberts University. And he said, Chad, God has a call in your life. He was a fisherman. He was a captain. He was someone that was, listen, you can pour into someone else's life when you ain't worried about your life because you know God's got you in his hands, in his will, in his plan. You see, what happens is we get so self-centered and we get so self-righteous that we can never lend a hand. And we see people running from God and running from their past and running and running and running. And we're too busy running as well that we can't ever meet, shake hands and say, listen, God loves you. He has a plan for you. He wants you to be victorious in him. He's going to bless your mess of a home. He's going to bless your mess of a life. He's going to get you through what you're going through. My God has supplied my need. He sent a hairdresser that I don't even know to send me a blessing in the nick of time. That's the kind of God we serve. He sent a professor that didn't know me to say, you're not answering the call because you're worried about what's supposed to be done, how life is supposed to be written. Let me tell you what, God writes a word and God writes a life that no one can understand because I don't know how a man could walk on the water. I don't know how a man could come and put his arms open and take his life or allow his life to be taken for me. I don't understand how a man can lead people through a nation and through a water with his arms lifted across a river, across a stream, across an ocean, across a sea. I don't understand how people can put a trumpet to their mouth and blow it and walls come down. I don't understand how a man can get into a lion's den and pray and the peace of God hit the lions. I don't understand how people can walk through a fiery furnace and never get burned. I don't understand that, but I know this. God has a call, a plan, and a purpose, and it's not for misery. It's not for hurt, but it is for wealth. It is for peace. It is for joy. It is for prosperity, longevity through Jesus Christ. And he asked me, he said, what are you doing here? And I finally said, I don't know. And he said, God's got a call. On your life. And that day, I went home and I saw a TV guy preaching and talking about a Bible college. And I knew that that was the next step and the call that led me and my wife and my family to each and every one of you that are in this room. It's through answering the call. Jonah chapter 2 is the conflict. And Jonah 2, all we see is a man in the bottom of a fish's gut crying out for three days. And finally, after the third day, God spoke to him. And he said, Jonah, I'm going to put you free on dry land. And in chapter number 3, verse number 1, listen to this. And the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. God doesn't repeat himself and God does not change his mind very often. But in this story, in chapter number 3, verse number 1, God spoke a second time. Arise and go to Nineveh, the great city, and call out against The message that I tell you. So Jonah rose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city. It took him three days to get across that city. And for three days he declared, there will be destruction come. There will be the wrath of God come unless you listen to God. Let me tell you what, the call may not be easy to take. And the message may even be harsher. But God has called each and every one of you to be his messengers into this world that is desperately dying and in need of a savior. And we're the only example, we're the only taste, we're the only flavor that they're going to get to receive Jesus. 
It doesn't matter what kind of bad week you've had or bad day you've had. It's better than one second in hell. It's better than one moment without Jesus' grace. It's better than one moment without the Prince of Peace living inside of you. One minute with God is better than a fraction of a second anywhere with the enemy. One moment with God is better than the best drug trip you could be on. One moment with God is better than winning the lottery a hundred times over. One moment with God is better than any ecstasy you could find on this earth because it's a moment that'll last your lifetime and eternity if we'll just answer the call and speak the message and go forth into what God has called us to do. Amen? So Jonah preached the message and the king said, everybody, we're going to fast. Everybody, we're going to fast. Our dogs are going to fast. Poor buddy. Our cats are going to fast. Their kittens are going to fast. The king got into sackcloth and ashes and he says, there's no water. There's no water. There's no food. There's no grain until we all repent. Let me tell you what, that's repentant. When you say, everybody in this house is going to get saved. My wife's going to get saved. My husband's going to get saved. The dog's going to get saved. The cat's going to get saved. The cow's going to get saved. We are all getting clean in 19. We are all going to go forth in 19. God sent Jonah to this city that was great, to this city that was huge, to this city that took him days to get through. Let me tell you what, it may take you time to get through. It may take you time to get through what you're going through, but you keep speaking the message of God. You keep speaking hope. You keep speaking life. And you're going to get through it. And there's going to be revival. There's going to be redemption. There's going to be joy. There's going to be prosperity. There's going to be provision. There's going to be these things if you'll just get through it no matter how big it is. Amen? The Bible says in verse number 9. Verse number eight, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who knows? God may turn and relent and turn from his fierce anger so that we may not perish. I don't know of another time that God changed his mind. But in verse number 10, God changed his mind. You may be going through a situation in your life and you go, how is this going to change? When you begin to speak God over it, it's going to change. You may be here this morning. You may be watching right now online. When is this sickness going to leave? When you stop speaking at it and speak to it and command it to go. When is this going to change in my life? Stop talking about it. And start talking to it and demand and declare it to leave my house in Jesus' name. When you stand up to things with the power that God has given to you, let me tell you what, it may take days, weeks, months, or years, but you're going to get through it if you just keep the faith. Keep speaking the word of God. And when God, verse number 10, saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented. Or he turned back the disaster that he said he would do to them. And he did not do it. This morning, whatever you feel like may be at your throat. Know this. that You speak the word of God over it and you're going to get through it. God will change God will change that that disaster that you feel like you're on. God will change that that moment that you feel like nothing's going to turn this around. 23 years ago, I met a woman that changed my life. 23 years ago, I was a young, 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 young man. I actually was. I was about 20 years old, 19, 20 years old, 20. 
And I fell in love, but she didn't fall in love with me. I fell in love with this girl, but she thought at one point I've heard her say that I was sent by the devil. And we all know that can't be true. She was Nineveh, and I was taking it for Jesus. And I had to change her mind. She thought I was the devil because, not the devil, sent by the devil because I was flattering her. I was sweet talking her. Brian, I was probably what you were in high school, a total dude. Hey, baby, drop the zero and get with the hero. I'm sure you use that line. That's how you got to hurt and get uh, say yes to marriage. I was that guy. I was a fool because I was acting my age. But dad would say, you're acting your IQ, which ain't very much higher than my age. He said, she, she didn't want to play games. But Jim, I thought I was being cool, man. Suave. You remember that song? Rico. Suave. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Everybody over 40, you know what I'm saying. Rico. Suave. Anyway. I, I thought I was being cool. But I'd met a woman, not a girl. We weren't on the playground anymore playing tag. We weren't playing games. She was an adult woman that wanted an adult relationship and didn't want a boy. The Bible says when I was a child, I thought as a child, I spoke as a child, I I did things like a child, but when I became a man, I put away those childish things. But on the dating scene, I hadn't done it yet. And I was kind of offended and put off. And I assumed there's something wrong with her. (laughs) She doesn't get this good looking guy. Are you kidding me? She deserves to stay single. But there was a call that I knew she was the one. And there was not going to be two or three. There was one. I realized she didn't need to change. But my heart needed to change. My mind needed to change. And I began to pray. And I began to open the scriptures. And the word of God began to tell me what a husband was supposed to be like. And I'm like, I ain't acting like that. I'm acting like an idiot. It's what I'm acting like. I gotta, I gotta stop playing games. I gotta stop being cool, and I gotta start being me. And then we'll see if this thing's gonna work. You see, when Jonah went to Nineveh, those people had a choice. We can still play our games, we can still do our thing, or we can allow God to move and bring the biggest revival, probably without a doubt, the largest revival in the Old Testament to pass when the people begin to listen and the people begin to repent and the people begin to change. Let me tell you what changes God's heart. When you change yours, God will change his mind. When you change your heart and you change what you give to and you change what you're speaking to and you change what you're sowing to and you change. Oh, it's hard to say, I'm the one that needs to change, aren't I? Oh, it's hard for a parent to go, I guess it's not everybody else's kid. It's my child. It's my life. It's not everybody else's marriage. It's my marriage that needs to change. Oh, it's not everybody else's attitude. It's my attitude. Oh, it's not everybody else's line. Maybe I'm the one line. Maybe I'm the one speaking negativity. Maybe I'm the one. And when I begin to change, which I'm a guy that I learn a lesson real fast. And in about two weeks, she learned I had changed. And in about two weeks, I said, Helen, if I were to move to Montana or Wyoming, if God called me to, because now it was greater than our relationship, but it was answering that call. I'd run from it a first time, but I wasn't going to run from it a second time. And I said, God sent me here to Columbus, Ohio to pick up skills that I needed for the call, but I knew that God sent me here for a helpmate as well. And I would be honored if you'd be my helpmate in the call because at the end of the day it's not just going to be I, I hate to say it, she wanted to marry a veterinarian that didn't happen she wanted to marry someone with money that didn't happen yet 
but she was willing to take a chance on a guy. She's willing to take a chance on a guy with a call because that's what she was looking for. She didn't realize when God sent her there that she was looking after a man of God and that's what she was going to do. And right now in this church, we have probably one of the finest women of God that lead us, that guide us, and you don't even realize it. She won't get behind a mic maybe once a year, if that. But I'm going to tell you what, she leads and she answers the call. And Helen, God's called you and he's anointed you and he's going to order your steps and you're going to see why you're going through what you're going through. And God is faithful and just when we answer the call. Stand to your feet. If you believe it, give God a hand clap of praise. Every Sunday, we pray for the lost. Whether you're in this room or you're online, you're the reason we come. And we're going to pray for the lost today. In a few moments, I'm going to have you lift your hand. And we have people that will go pray with you. They'll go to your aisle and they'll pray with you. They'll meet you at the front. But I'm praying, go church. I'm not going to have you raise your hand if you have a call, because you all do. But as we worship God, I'm going to ask you to answer that call by surrendering your will to His. I want to encourage you for the next three weeks, come to church every Sunday by 1030. By 1030. I want you to see what goes on here before 1030. I want you to see it. I want you to come walk around the stage. I want you to come to the green room if you want to come to the green room. I want you to come and experience this is what goes on at my tra- in my house. This is my house of God right here. This is it. I want you to walk down the hall and I want you to see the Sunday school class. I want you to walk down the hall and see children's church. I want you to see what's going on here. And then I want you to see God in three weeks. I'm going to say, what is your call? And what is your purpose in this house? Because it's not God's will for a church to not take care of itself. And it's going to take you three weeks. There's something about 21 days that will break a habit. Break a habit of tardiness in this church. To break a habit of of just coming and attending. I want you to say, God, I really. Because if God did for me, a poor boy whose dad pastored a storefront church, But now, God is moving mightily in our life. God has given exceedingly abundantly more than I could ask, think, or hope. God has blessed my sister. She teaches and she she is the principal of a Christian school. Loving kids, loving Jesus, loving God, serving the community, serving those around us. We have a child care that is blessed, anointed, and highly favored. That loves its kids. That prays for those boys and girls. Loves those moms and dads. We are blessed around here. And I want you to receive those blessings so every head bowed and every eye closed and if you do not have a personal relationship with Jesus we're going to personally pray with you right now those of you online we want to pray for you if you have a need in your life at all we believe God that you're here that you're part of this church you're part of this family but if there's one in this room and you say pastor I need Jesus today to come into my heart I want you to lift up your hands because we're going to pray for you How many today are ready to see this place filled with unbelievers that have been thrown out, pushed out, and pushed down? And you're not going to stand for it anymore, but you're going to lend a hand of hope and you're going to believe in God. I want everybody in this room to lift up your hands if you need prayer for anything. But I want us to sing today, whatever mountain, whatever water, whatever ocean. Let me tell you what, you're not sinking. Jesus didn't sink. And when his disciples started to sink, he was there. Let me tell you what, you're not going to sink because Jesus is there. And all you need to do... I'm Pastor Chad Bartlett, and I want to thank you for joining us today online for our service. If you have a need in your life and you weren't able to be here, please let us know. You can call or text. You can go to Facebook, and you can message us, or you can even email us. And all that information is at the bottom of the screen. We want to be here for you. We want to help you in your life go, grow, and give. We want to help you grow spiritually. We want to help you be able to give into your community and give to those around you. We want you to go into the world. We want you to share your faith. We want you to have these small groups in your home on Sunday. Gather people around, and they can come and watch and fellowship you with you watching Go Church. If today it has impacted your life and you believe that God has something great destiny for you, We want you to sow a seed to gochurch.tv. You can text us at 84321. You can go online. 
We're here for you, and we thank you for everything you do for us.